Hi everyone, welcome back to Soul Shine Designs. Um, this video is going to be labeled number five, but if you're in the US, you're not gonna see video number four, unfortunately. So in my last video, I had just some light music playing in the background, but one of the songs in the video was flagged for copyright infringement, and so they blocked it in the United States. Uh, people in other countries can still watch it, but unfortunately it's not available to you if you're in the US. So moving forward, I just won't play music in the background. Although it's kind of like a comfort thing for me, but um, I just don't want to risk having any more videos blocked. So, um, in this video, I'm going to do a couple things. Um, I'm not going to do a painting, but a couple weeks back, my first pouring video, we did a Dutch pour on a 16 by 20 canvas, and that is cured and ready to seal. So that particular painting, I'm just going to do a gloss spray sealer. And so um, I will do that with you here on the video. It's very simple. Um, and then I'm going to show you how I back one of my canvases, a previous painting that I had done. So just bear with me because I'm going to be moving from room to room in my house. So I'll, I'll pause the video in between um, so you don't have to walk with me through rooms in my house, but um, I am here in my kitchen again. My art room is almost completely finished um, with my setup, so I'm excited about that, but I do currently have um, stuff laying all over the desk, so I'm not gonna be working in there today. So um, here in the kitchen is where I'm going to back a painting with you, and then in my garage, which is a big mess, is where I'm going to spray to seal the other painting. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pause and set some things up. Be right back. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do with this painting is give it a nice, good cleaning. That way I know all of the oils, whether it's from um, the wood conditioner, the Minwax wood conditioner that we used, or from my hand prints or whatever else, any dust and oils, we're gonna clean that off before we spray the sealant on there. Because no matter if you're using uh, any type of varnish, uh, any clear coat, Anything that says varnish, clear coat, top coat, polyurethane, uh, resin, any of it that you're going to put on your painting to seal it is not going to adhere to those places where there's dust, dirt, or oil. So we want to clean that off. I'm going to angle you down so you can see the painting. That's my dog Reagan in the background. Okay, so here's this beauty that we did a couple weeks ago. And um, if you have an idea for a title for this painting, um, put it in the comments, because this one's untitled. I see she's barking at the um, our mail lady. <laughs> okay. So, to clean off my paintings, I know a lot of people use a variety of things to soak up oils, such as cornstarch or flour, baby powder. Um, uh, many people use dash, like the Dawn dish soap for cleaning, and I like using the Dawn dish spray. It's amazing at cleaning grease off of things. So I'm not going to spray this directly on the painting, but I'm just going to take a soft washcloth, get it wet with warm water, and I spray it on the washcloth.
a little bit of this goes a long way, so I'm just going to give a light spray. And then I'm just going to go gently over the painting. And then it's going to take a few times of rinsing. I don't know if you can see the... I like to get the... I can see the soap on there. I don't know if you can see it on the video. I can see the soap on there and I just let it sit for a minute. Do its job. And I'm going to go wash rinse the washcloth and then I'm going to wipe it down with just a the wet washcloth a few different times because takes a few passes to get all of this soap off. I'm so glad our mail lady came. I'm super excited for um, a shipment I'm receiving today. So I know in the past video I talked about how I have crappy lighting. Like you can see, I mean here in my kitchen you can see the glare and shadow and everything right now. And um, in my art studio I have like a few different lights and I have found the lighting isn't that much better <laughs> that I would no matter what angle or where I am trying to film or take pictures I always have a glare from a light somewhere so <clears throat> I ordered one of these popular ring lights <clears throat> excuse me that's on a stand that I can um, film from that reaches a lot taller than this one I have currently just clips onto the countertop or desktop so I'm excited to try this new light I will be giving it a try on my next painting video When I'm rinsing the washcloth, and I'm not seeing any more residue. Right. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So it looks as though all of the soap is off of the painting. And then I'm just going to take a paper towel, get any of the heavier bit of water on here, and I'm going to let it air dry for a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video because I know watching me wash the painting was boring enough. I'm sure you don't want to watch the, watch the painting air dry, so I'll be back again. Okay, back again. So the painting is dry. There's no more moisture on it. Um, 
sometimes you can help along the drying process if you get all of the um, the water off with a paper towel or dry cloth and you can use your blow dryer like on cool to help it along um, another thing that I do like in my first video where we painted this I showed you the process of how I make sure the canvas is nice and tight um, by spritzing lightly the back and using the blow dryer to tighten it up once the painting is cured I before I back it I do that once more so when you're drying it if you're using the blow dryer you can do that at the same time before you seal it so Today on this painting, I'm just going to use a spray. This is the by Krylon Triple Thick Clear, the Crystal Clear Glaze. And I know all of that is probably looking backwards to you, but um, I found this, find this to work really well. And um, you just want to shake it real good for a few minutes make sure it's all mixed up i've already been shaking this and um, we're going to go ahead and move to the garage okay so i'm out here in my garage and i have a box set up where i spray my paintings and i elevate it i elevate it just on some cups and i have the box lined like this and i'm probably gonna do probably four coats of the spray varnish so I'm gonna start one way and then I'll alter alternate the way that I spray I always spray off to the side to start and then just go in slow even So that is one, <clears throat> that is one layer, and then I have this fan I'm going to run in my brush. And I keep the um, door open while I'm spraying. So, um, I have nice ventilation and I'm not, um, inhaling too much of the vapor. So, okay. Well, I can show you how I've done some more organizing in my art room since the last video. Let me flip you around. So on this desk, like I said, both desks are cluttered right now. On this desk, here's, um... Here's the painting that I did in um, video number four that you're unable to see in the US. Um, a couple other paintings that I've done. Oh, this one I also did in video number four. And um, I did a swipe and then using my Cameo 4, um, I printed off this vinyl silhouette and um, once I start playing around with resin, I think I'm going to resin this one so it has a nice glassy finish to it. Here I just have some little spots that I poured down some paint I'm going to use for jewelry. And I have some pieces up on this wall. I'll just show you around because the next painting that I do, I will be doing here in my art studio. And then on this side is my other desk. This is probably where I'll be doing most of my um, pouring is over here. So I have this stand set up. These are basically 
when I use a base paint, like a black or white, these are the ones that I use. <clears throat> these are the three brands that I prefer, and I kind of um, alternate them. And then I have my pegboard wall for my tube paints. And, um, and then I have my shelf here where I'm keeping all of my sprays and my bottled paints. So, um, and then this wall, I started, you can't really see them because they're clear, but started putting um, some little clear hook, like the command strip clear hooks on that wall. And I'm gonna use that wall once I have my paintings clear coated and backed and I have all of the, the hanging wire and everything on them, that's where I'm gonna go ahead and hang those paintings so that they're just ready to go to package if someone wants to purchase them. All right, let me put you back in my little thing. There we go. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna show you while we're waiting for that first layer of the spray glaze to dry um, before we go and put another coat, I'm going to show you how I back and finish my paintings. So let me go grab one. Okay, so this painting is a beauty. I love this one. Sorry about the glare again. Um, this one is 20 inches by 20 inches squared, and I have titled it specifically The Pacific. And um, this one has already been sprayed. I think I did four coats on this um, with the clear gloss spray. And then um, I always sign my art on the bottom right side. So I have my signature here and that um, I put on an acrylic paint marker and then it's on there before I spray. So it's all sealed in as well. And then before I back my paintings, I put <clears throat> all the information on it. So I put the title, um, usually what type of pour it is, I sign it again, I put my, um, my business title, the size, the size of the painting, um, and then the date that I completed the painting. So this painting itself, I completed on March 18th this year. That way you have this information in your signature on the actual canvas um, if anyone were to just take off your paper backing and um, try and somehow pass it along as your own. You have this here on the back of the canvas. There's no removing that. It shows that, that that is your original work. So this is 20 by 20 and um, I back some paintings with brown paper and some paintings with white paper and I'm gonna do this one in brown. All right, so I have my handy dandy roll and I know this painting is 20 inches by 20 inches so I'm gonna set it aside for a moment while I cut the paper backing. So like I said, that painting, this painting rather, has already been, um, the painting cured completely. Um, I sealed it, the sealing is cured completely. Um, I already sprayed and dried the back just to make sure that it's nice and tight. And um, I like using this cutting board simplifies things. It has measurements right on here for me. And I'm going to do an inch. So the painting is 20 by 20. So I'm going to do my square 
paper, 21 by 21. So I have my handy dandy um, yarn stick so that way I get a straight edge and then it simplifies things to use one of these rotary cutting tools. So I have my taper at the 21 inch mark. yardstick down and then I'm just going to use this edge and cut right along the edge of the paper. So, yeah, I had to switch hands because I wasn't going too straight there. All right. I need to put a new blade on this one. Okay. Let's see. I could I could cut that out. Maybe make a bloopers bloopers reels for my videos, but I'll just leave it. paper roll aside and that didn't cut very straight so I'm actually gonna turn this around and just get a straighter edge on this. Let me cut the width first actually then that'll be easier. So I'm gonna go to 21. And then this piece I'll set aside, the piece that I cut off, <clears throat> and I have a little drawer that I throw my scraps and I can use this on a little painting. So that I'm not wasting any of my materials. Okay, so now let me try and really straighten out these edges because they're... Let me see what I got here. So I got, and that's measuring at 22. paper cutter. That might be one of my next purchases. 
So all these edges are going to be folded. So it's not a huge deal, but it just makes the folding a lot easier when you're working with a straight line to begin with. And it also helps when you have <clears throat> a sharpened blade, so... Oh my goodness. Alright, so... Grab my handy dandy pencil and I'm just going to mark off these at 20 inches where I'm going to fold it in. So. I'm at 20 inches here. Nope. Oh, you can't, I, you're looking at me the whole time. I need to angle you down. There, now you can really see my bloopers, maybe. Okay, so this edge, I'm going to bring it right to the side here. And then I got this on 20 inches. I'm go ahead and do a line. I'm going to do that for each side. And you would think with all of these measurements and straight lines that everything would just come out perfect. And um, it never seems to be that case. And even though I am a little newer to this, as I've said, as far as backing pa painting, since I've just started my small business, um, since this is kind of new to me, if anyone is watching this and is an expert at backing, Paper backing your paintings. And you have any tips or tricks for me? Please, please put those in the comments because if there, <clears throat> excuse me, if there is an easier way to measure this all out, please share because. I have found this is just getting this measured out and folded to put on the back is one of my least favorite things to do lately. <clears throat> okay, so let me just double check this. So from this line to Let me see, guys. What am I doing wrong? That's 20. Oh my goodness. Okay, don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. I've already recorded too long to cut this out. So, I'm not even joking when I tell you my brain, my brain sucks at calculating um, numbers. So I did this 21 by 21. <laughs> we have four sides. So this is 21 and a half. <clears throat> All right, y'all, I might just end up cutting this portion out. <laughs> Not even gonna lie. Okay, so 
I think I need to fold in a quarter inch on each side. I need my inner square to be 20 by 20. This is what I need. So, um, dang it. So this is 21. <clears throat> this is measuring more than 21. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to the way I did my very first one. So, <clears throat> this is 20 by 20. I'm going to go ahead and... All right, we're going to set this right on the paper that we cut out so that we have approximately an even amount around the sides because that is all going to be folded in all right and i am just going to go along the sides of the canvas with my pencil and we don't want the paper to go all the way to the edge of the canvas so when we fold these lines There we go. Okay. When I fold these lines, I'm going to fold it in a little bit from the actual line that we drew. <clears throat> okay. So, if you are watching and you're seeing... All these lines the first lines that I did that was that was a mess up so we're gonna go with these lines that we drew around the canvas and it would be it would be so wonderful if everything would work out to be straight lines, but that never seems to be the case for me. All right, I'm gonna fold this over and then I'm just gonna make a crease with my fingernail in the paper. Fold that over. <clears throat> okay, when I fold this paper down, I use this. The glue that I use is a 3-in-1 Advanced Craft Glue. The brand is Beacon, and I bought this at Michael's. And then I just put, let's see. I'm sorry, I'm really bad about making sure I have you in the view. Um, I just go down this edge and put a thin line of this glue. and then fold it back over. And press it down. Okay. And now I'm going to do the opposite edge and put this yardstick just inside. Oh, well that, this line is a little bit straighter than the other one, thank goodness. All right, I'm gonna make that crease, you 
using my fingernail. And real quick, before I do the other edges, I'm gonna bring my canvas in and then just see how we're... I wanna make sure that these edges are within the boundaries of the canvas and I do the so that way, they're sitting right on this wood because I'm going to staple it around. And then it does not have to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. I have to tell myself that many, many times over again because I just would love for things to be perfect, but as we all know, that is not the way life goes. So just have to deal with it. All right, so now I'm gonna do one of these sides, same thing. Oh, make sure I'm not slipping. And I'm gonna make a crease. Actually, on this corner, I'm gonna fold the corners. Fold the corners in like this. So, let me show you. Let's see if you can see. Okay, so if I just leave it straight and I fold it over like that, this is how the finished edge is, is gonna look and sometimes this little paper might hang over. So I like to fold that corner in. This is the back side, so it really doesn't, you could do it either way, but I just find folding the corner in makes a sharper um, point at the corner and I know nothing's gonna hang over the edge. So, um, that's just how I do it but not everybody does everything the same way. And then I just put a dot of glue under these corners, press them down, and then do my line of glue across. Press it down. So, um, Thank goodness y'all have the ability to flip through videos with the fast forward function because watching me do all four of these corners is probably not the most entertaining thing. However, it might be helpful for some people. Maybe you only needed to watch me do one side and that's okay but I'm just gonna go ahead and do all the sides in the video just in case it may be helpful to someone and then also because I'm not super savvy when it comes to editing these things so I'm gonna before I fold this last edge over I'm gonna bring the canvas one more time So this last folded edge will be the most important folded edge. And I don't want to mess it up. 
so I don't want this paper backing to go over any edge of the canvas. But I don't want it to be too short either, and I have extra lines on my um, paper from my earlier mistake, and so I don't want to make the mistake of holding at the wrong line. And this has actually worked out to where I'm going to be folding outside, not inside. So I'm just going to kind of do a little fold right on top of the canvas. itty bitty corners but I'm still gonna fold this corner in so we get a sharp point and then go in with the glue One line of glue, and then we'll press it down. So, I really hope my videos aren't too boring with no, no music in the background. Of course, when you're watching videos, I suppose music in the background isn't the what you came for so all right this glue dries pretty quickly so um whether it's dry or not doesn't make a big difference but um the first side that i did is already dry and now we need our canvas All right, so I, so you lay your folded edges down so it's nice and clean on the back. And then I like to find what's gonna be the nicest layout for the paper backing. Because with fluid art on the back of our paintings, this one's not too bad, but we have this paint that comes over the back, and then so there's painted areas and unpainted areas, and so I'm just trying to find where it'll lay that it's not showing too much ugly. And I kind of like that right there. So I'm going to flip it around, and I like to start with the top, this is the top of the painting. And I'm gonna use a staple gun to make sure I have plenty of staples. All right, so at the top, I'm gonna place it right where I want it and make sure it's gonna be good on the bottom. And I just hold it right here in the center. I think 
to try and keep it as evenly centered as possible. Okay, so um, that's where I'm going to want it. So I'm going to hold this tight, and I'm just going to go ahead and put one staple there. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to pull it tight straight across from the other staple. Staple it here. And then I'm going to go to the sides. So um, it's paper backing. It's not going to be perfect. You don't want to pull it absolutely too tight. And so this last side, I'm going to just pull it top with the staple on the opposite side. Hold it and staple. So now I just have one staple on each side and I'm going to go to the corners next. So I'm going to pull this corner and I'm going to do one staple on each side. And then go to the next corner. Pull it tight. One staple on each side. So you do this on all four corners. One last corner. So now that it's nice and tight and stretched, stapled at each corner, one staple on each side, I just go around each edge and depending on the size of the canvas, it's going to um, be a different number of staples you put in each one. So since I have one centered and one on the side, I usually go center. So I'm going to put a staple in the center. And I'm going to put staples again in the center, and that'll be good for this canvas. So, on this side, and I just eyeball it. So, center, center, and the center of each of those. And I'm going to do the same on each side, and I like to work opposite sides first. Um. Oh, another thing to mention on, on uh, when you're backing your painting, so this one is a standard side just stapled back canvas so the canvas is already stapled on the side so when you do lay your paper down and you are putting staples in you just kind of want to make sure you're not trying to staple right on top of another staple because sometimes that that doesn't always work out great if you're hitting another staple it causes your um, staple to crimp up and then it just looks ugly. So okay. one more side. And I apologize if you can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep you right, right here in the view. And there we go. Okay. 
So, I'm all done stapling. So this back is completely finished and stapled in. And you have a nice finished look to the back. So now what I do, um, I want to make sure I have the top of my canvas facing upward. And then I have, I use these half page labels and I put the title of the painting, um, my name and my business name. And I'm going to stick that centered towards the top. Okay, and then I have these probably handcrafted in the USA stickers that I had made and I put one right in the bottom here. And then I attach a certificate of authenticity. So this one I already have printed out and signed. And it tells um, the title, the date it was completed, the artist's name, it gives a description, um, also tells how it was sealed, and then gives care instructions, and then it has my signature on the bottom. I fold that in thirds, and then I just put it in the envelope, and this envelope gets this, the same kind of glue that I used for the paper backing and then I place this centered and more towards the bottom and I just press it on there And then I also put a photo of the painting inside the envelope. So I'll just let that dry. So here's the back of the painting. It has the title, label, and certificate of authenticity. Now we just need to put the hanging equipment on there. I'm going to pause real quick and I'm going to put one more spray sealer on um, the painting in the garage. So each time I put a layer down, I just swipe the spray in a different direction. So if I went across horizontally, this time I'm going to do across the opposite direction and then the next time I might go diagonally and then diagonally again. Um, but I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna get the equipment to put the hanging hardware on here and I'll be right back. Okay, so um, I sprayed one more layer of the sealer and I have everything I need to put the hanging hardware on the back of this painting. So I actually purchased a kit, a picture hanging kit on Amazon. They're fairly inex inexpensive. I don't know how many pieces came in this, but it's quite a bit. So I need two of these pieces. And then I have wire and <clears throat> the screws that came the screws that came with this kit are actually too long to use on the depth of this canvas because then um, the 
pointy end of the screw ends up just poking out the other side. So I got some small shorter screws and I just need two of those. A wire cutter, some needle no needle, sorry, needle nose pliers, and I use a drill with a Phillips head. You can use a regular screwdriver as well. And then I just use just a regular push pin to mark my spot where I'm gonna drill it in. So um, on this canvas, and I'm just using the measurements on um, this cutting board. I'm gonna move you down so you can see. Whoops, wrong way. So, I'm going the wrong way again. I am, I don't know what I'm doing, guys, sorry. Okay, so I just have this line lined up on a corner here, and I want my hanging equipment to be down. I'm going to put this is down approximately just over three inches, so about three and a half inches down. And I'm going to bring it in so it's right over the, on the edge of this paper. And I'm just going to poke a hole centered with this thumb tack. Okay, so that measurement is, for the most part, approximate. Approximately three and a half inches down from the side of the canvas. So I'm just using this as a more accurate measurement. So it was almost right, almost right on, almost right on three and a half inches. Tiny bit more. But I'm going to use this to get an accurate measurement and then we're a half inch in. So that way when I come over here and I do this side, it's not approximate. So we're going to go down. I'm going to just double check over here. It is right at the three and a half. Okay, so I'm going to come down to three and a half. And then I'm going to bring it in a half an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and mark a hole with my tack. Okay. And now I'm ready to screw these in. So I'm going to position this so that the hole is centered with my mark. And I got the screw here. And I just make sure this is straight and going nice and slow. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm at a bad angle for you. Let's see if this is better. Okay, so I just hold this straight and then go in nice and slow with the drill.
because I want that to be so it's not going to be swiveling around. And then I'm going to do this other side. Reagan's just being very vocal today. I don't know what she's huffing and puffing about. She's an old girl. She'll be 11 in December, and her sister, her, com her companion of nine years, just passed away last week, and so she's been acting pretty silly. All right, so I'm doing the same exact thing over here. Make sure this is straight. Okay, it's not gonna go anywhere. Bring it back up. Okay. I was thinking I would be able to get this video um, in under an hour, but that's not the case, guys. I'm just too slow. All right, so I have this wire that came in the kit, and I'm gonna start. Make sure this is straight and not kinked in the middle. I'm gonna move you closer again so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna start on one side, and I'm just gonna put this wire up through and I want to leave some excess there I probably have um, four inches I'm just gonna fold it over pull it tight I'm gonna kind of wrap it around just a couple of times keeping the wire right next to it um, itself going up and now I'm going to come to this side so when I'm measuring out this wire where it's going to be attached here I don't want this wire to pull up over the edge of the canvas so I'm going to pull it so that it doesn't and then some people might just put one screw in the wall to hang it's advised to put two so I kind of just make sure this will be okay to hang across two screws I have enough slack in it it's enough slack that it's not going to hang over the top of the painting and I'm going to hold that right there. I'm just going to bend it right there. And then give it also about four inches like I did the other side. And I'm just going to cut it off right there. With the wire cutters. pull that in to where I made that kink in the wire and I'm going to do the same exact thing I did on the other side now I'm going to continue wrapping this around and I'm going to keep it so that it's right next to itself I'm going to wrap it up so that it's on here about an inch and a half and I'm going to pause you for a moment okay I just want to make sure you can see what I'm doing here so I'm pulling the wire straight and I'm wrapping it around I'm pulling it up and pulling it back making sure that it's laying right next to the wrap that I just did And I just do that over and over. 
and you can do it to whatever length you want and then just keep it even on both sides so I'm just going to record doing one side here for you and then I'll pause and do the other side and then we'll finish off this video, another long video, but I hope it has been somewhat helpful, not too boring. Okay, so that's come up enough there. I'm going to go ahead Take the wire cutters, clip it off, and then I go in with these needle nose pliers, give it a nice pinch and spin it around so we don't have any sharp little edges hanging there. Sharp little edge there. Those edges of the wire are pokey. So, okay. So now I can run my hand on here. There's nothing poking or sticking me. Okay, so give me a minute. I'm going to do the other side and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, guys. So I did the other side. So as you can see here, the hanging hardware is attached. It has some slack in it. Um, like I said, that way someone can hang this appropriately on the wall so that it's nice and sturdy using two um, screws or hooks. And we've got our label, signature, certificate of authenticity. This is gonna go on my wall temporarily until someone purchases it and um, then when someone does want to buy it it's all ready for me to package so um, this 20 by 20 painting specifically the Pacific is completed and I am going to be posting this for sale it's $60 plus shipping and handling if anyone is interested um, you can check out my Facebook page Soul Shine Design. Soul Shine is hyphenated. Um, also, check out more videos on my TikTok at Soul Shine Designs, all one word. And I'm just going to take you back out to the garage real quick before um, I end this video. Just so you can see, I've got the fan going in here, and let me flip you. So I'm not sure if you can see, but so far we have two coats of the clear gloss spray. This last coat is not quite dry. As you can see, sometimes the spray goes on and it, it'll it have like, see on this edge, you can still kind of see a hazy look, but as it dries, it clears up real nice and glossy. So, there you have it. And this one is a 16 by 20 once it is, once I finish sealing it and I have it cured and backed. This one will also be posted and this one will be listed for $50 plus shipping and taxes and it will all sit in the future on my Facebook page for sale and um, coming soon I will have a website available um, if anyone is interested in purchasing any of my paintings and I am also creating some very lovely jewelry pieces that are one-of-a-kind original artwork pieces and those will be available as well. So um, I will post a new video of a painting shortly. Hope you all have a great day. Bye.